The story of Daniel number five. Our story of Daniel now jumps about 23 years. Daniel is a much older man. and King Nebuchadnezzar had died and now his son Belshazzar was ruling Babylon. I just need to remind you about the first story of Daniel, where we heard how King Nebuchadnezzar stole all the silver and gold bowls and cups from the temple that were used in the worship of the one true God. Later on, you'll see why I reminded you of that. Anyhow, Belshazzar knew all about what had happened to Nebuchadnezzar and how he had changed him from being a cruel king to a, being a good king who loved God and looked after the people. But sadly, Belshazzar decided, now he was king, he didn't want anything to do with the one true God of heaven. He was going to do what he wanted to do. First, he decided to throw a party. So he had a great banquet and invited all his friends. He got lots of food and alcohol and they agreed that they would all get very drunk and do whatever they felt like doing. He was sure the Babylonian gods that he worshipped wouldn't mind. The more they drank, the more silly and rude and disgusting they got. That happens when you drink too much alcohol. Then Belshazzar suddenly remembered the gold and silver temple bowls and cups that Nebuchadnezzar had safely stored away in the palace. So he decided it would be great fun to get them. He filled those holy vessels with drink. And then they all drank and raised their cups to praise the gods of gold, of silver, of brass, of wood and of stone. That was a terrible thing to do. Then suddenly, the fingers of a human hand appeared on the plaster of the wall. The king watched in horror as the hand wrote. His face turned pale. He was so frightened that he felt his knees knocking. Quickly, he called his wise men and said if any of them could read the writing, he would give them a purple robe and give them a gold chain to wear and make them a very important person in the kingdom. So they all tried to read the writing, but couldn't do it. Then King Belshazzar became even more terrified. Then the queen heard about it and came into the banquet hall. Don't look so scared, she said. Call for Daniel and he'll tell you what the writing means. Nebuchadnezzar appointed him chief of all the wise men and he has the spirit of the holy gods in him. So Daniel was brought before the king and the king said to him, I have heard that you are able to solve difficult problems. If you can read this writing and tell me what it means, I'll give you a purple robe and a gold chain around your neck and I'll make you the third highest ruler in the kingdom. Well, Daniel told the king he didn't want any gifts and he could give his rewards to someone else. But he would read the writing for the king. But first, Daniel told Belshazzar off. He reminded him what had happened to Nebuchadnezzar when he became too proud and how he had gone mad and been driven from the palace and lived with the animals and eaten grass until he admitted that the Most High God is over all kingdoms on the earth. Daniel said Belshazzar should have known better than to use the temple basins and cups to praise the gods of Babylon who couldn't see or understand instead of praising the one true God who sees everything. And so now God has sent the hand to write to him. Daniel then read the words, Mini, Mini, Tekel, Parsin, and told Belshazzar that God had sent the hand that wrote the words and that this was what the words meant. God has seen your wickedness and now your days have come to an end. The Babylonian kingdom will fall and will be given 
to the Medes and Persians. Then King Belshazzar commanded that Daniel should be clothed in purple and given a gold chain round his neck and he and be proclaimed the third highest ruler in the kingdom. But Daniel knew this was pointless because that very night Cyrus the Great invaded Babylonia. Persian kill, soldiers killed Belshazzar and put a new governor in place called Darius the Mede. So the Babylonian kingdom came to an end and the Persian kingdom began just as God had told Nebuchadnezzar in his first dream of the enormous dazzling statue. You see, both Nebuchadnezzar and Belshazzar had to learn that God is in charge, whether they believed it or not. And that's true of us too. Some people say they don't believe in God, but that doesn't mean he isn't there. I think we should pray for those people. Let's do that. Dear Lord Jesus, please help our friends to understand that you really do exist and that you care about them too. Amen. <laughs>